Good afternoon. Uh, it is my pleasure to be bringing you our finalized urban forest management plan. Um, we are ecstatic to be here today and present this with you. We've worked tirelessly over the last eight months and we hope you are as pleased with the final product as we are. Uh, so we would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather here today is the traditional unceded territory of the Wallistic and Mi'kmaq peoples. Uh, this territory is covered in the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Wallistic and Mi'kmaq peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. The treaties did not deal with the surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized the uh, Mi'kmaq and Wallistic title and established the rules for which was going to be an ongoing relationship between nations. Uh, so a brief outline of our presentation. We will begin with an introduction and then move into the goals and objectives. And then we will discuss the results from each client separately. We will begin with the town of Oromukto, then move on to the Department of National Defense, and then lastly, Oromukto First Nations before concluding our presentation. Uh, so we'd now like you to meet our team. Uh, my name is Axel Brieswa, and my fellow team members include Kayla McGarrigal, Dominic Gallia, Jerima Galbraith, Jordan Tischler, Caitlin Enders, Megan Goodall, Riley Spear, Simon LeBlanc, and Tim Woodward. Uh, so now we'd like you to meet our clients. Uh, with the town of Oromukta, we have Stephen Hart, who's the Chief Administrative Officer. Again, with the town of Oromukta, we have David Goodfellow, who is the Municipal Engineer Technologist. With the Oromukta First Nations, Robert Paul, who is the Economic and Development Officer. And lastly, with the Department of National Defense, Dana McCollum, who is the 5CDSG Range Biologist. So in order to develop this urban forest management plan, uh, there was a logical order of steps we needed to go through. First, we needed to understand our land base, and to do that, we needed to take a comprehensive inventory and analyze that data. From this, we were able to develop growth and yield charts, and then we were able to develop an operations plan and sensitivity analysis. So now I'd like to move on to the goals and objectives of each client. The overarching goals and commitment between the Town of Oromukta, Department of National Defense, and Oromukta First Nations are to maintain, protect, plant, and plan for the urban forest, current and future states, and retain cultural heritage. Each client's objectives have targets suited to each of their unique needs. Although it would, be, it would take too much of your time to discuss each target we have for each client, uh, there are certain overarching objectives that cover every client. These are to uh, have a comprehensive inventory complete, increase the growth of preferred species, increase maintenance and monitoring, increase aesthetic value, implement community outreach, increase the value of regulating services and natural assets, and reduce damage to dying trees. So we would like to begin by uh, talking about the results from the town of Oromokdo. And to do that, we will begin with a brief refresher on what we found in our initial inventory. So we surveyed three parts, Deer Park, Anniversary, and Gateway Marsh. And in Deer Park, it was found to be primarily composed of balls of fir, red maple, and gray birch. Anniversary Park was primarily red maple, gray birch, and balsam fir. And Gateway Marsh was balsam fir, red maple, and red spruce. From this, we were able to develop a stand delineation map, which you can see on the screen now. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with this land base, uh, the top left corner is Deer Park, the bottom left corner is uh, Anniversary Park, and the bottom middle is Gateway Marsh. Uh, so from our initial inventory, we also uh, wanted to determine the stage of succession that the forest was in, and from the diameter distribution and average density that uh, was found from our initial inventory, we found that the stands are in or close to uh, the stem exclusion phase of uh, stand succession, uh, and this was also indicative through uh, visual cues of a almost fully closed in canopy. Uh, so now moving on to our management scenarios. Uh, so this was uh, from our initial inventory, uh, we were able to develop growth and yield curves uh, through the use of open stand model. And then uh, from this growth and yield data, we were able to input it into Remsoft modeling software and analyze the effective treatments on our stands. Our first stand, or our first scenario, was grow all stands, and in this scenario, we wanted to project the forest into the future without the use of any treatments or uh, stochastic events. Our second scenario was to maximize carbon, in which uh, we allowed for two treatments to be or to occur. Um, this included pre-commercial thinning and fill planting. Uh, the goal of this second scenario was to essentially maximize the chance of reaching our objectives. Uh, for the client, 
This included maximizing carbon, as the title of this scenario represents, and, but also to increase climate adaptive species through fill planting. Uh, so it, you should note that our climate adaptive species, uh, the way we did that was we uh, took the species from a report developed by the Fundy Biosphere. Um, this report was entitled Forests of the Future and outlined uh, climate adaptive species to our current climate. And this chart shows some of the species that we used to analyze whether our uh, initial and forecasted conditions uh, met these goals and had the proper species composition. So moving on to the modeling results, uh, as you can see on the screen now, the left chart indicates scenario one in which no treatments occurred, and the uh, chart on the right uh, is the maximized carbon scenario. So the results from this, um, as you can see, the percent change in carbon or carbon sequestration uh, and standing value are the same values. And this is because both are generated from the growing stock of the stand and thus increase at the same rate. So for Deer Park, it was found that uh, the carbon storage within the forests and the uh, standing value of the stand both increased by 6% in Deer Park, 14% in Anniversary Park, and 19% in Gateway Marsh. Under our maximized carbon scenario, uh, Deer Park increased by 11%, Anniversary Park by 21%, and Gateway Marsh by 29%. From this data, we were also able to extract the climate adaptive species composition uh, from the initial inventory and the forecasted. And it was found that Deer Park went from 56 to 57 percent, Gateway Marsh stayed the same at 62 percent, and Anniversary Park increased for 80, from 87 to 90 percent for uh, our scenario one in which no treatments occurred. And under scenario two, in which we maximized carbon and allowed for treatment, uh, Deer Park increased from 56% to 59%, Gateway Marsh from 62% to 64%, and Anniversary Park from 87 to 92%. Uh, so it was also deemed necessary to introduce a sensitivity analysis. Uh, we chose spruce budworm due to the high, high composition of balsam fir and spruce within these stands. Although we could have done a scenario that would have analyzed the sensitivity to emerald ash borer, which is a current concern, uh, the species composition of ash within these stands was very, very low, and thus a spruce or an emerald ash borer outbreak wouldn't have a huge effect. But spruce budworm uh, still is, uh, it could be a potential risk, although uh, we have no reason to believe that it would target the stand. The sensitivity analysis was done in order to view the effects of what would happen if this did occur. Uh, so under the sensitivity analysis uh, on our recommended scenario of scenario one, uh, we determined that if an outbreak were to occur in 2021, uh, we would see a negative 18% uh, decrease in both carbon and standing value for Deer Park, five, negative 5% 5 for Anniversary Park, and negative 31% for Gateway Marsh. And as for climate adaptive species composition, this would shift in a favorable direction. Uh, Deer Park would increase from 56 to 68%, Gateway Marsh from 62 to 80%, and Anniversary Park from 87 to 94%. The reason this occurs is because balsam fir is not projected to be a climate adaptive species, and thus, if this species uh, drastically declined within the forest, it would actually benefit the climate adaptive species composition over time. Although this would drastically negatively affect all of our other objective indicators. So with that said, um, it is first and foremost recommended that a monitoring plan be put into place to keep our current inventory up to date. Uh, we've calculated an estimated cost and of the time that it would take to reevaluate the forest using the same uh, methods that we did. And we calculated at approximately $3,000 to re-inventory the parks. Next, uh, the recommended scenario um, out of the two was our grow all stand scenario. And the reason for this is because uh, the cost of implementing scenario two in which bill planting and pre-commercial thinning is done would be uh, of such high value at approximately $40,600 that we deemed it unnecessary 
as most of our objectives are already met through the grow all stand scenario where no treatments occur. Uh, so these objectives are on screen now. Uh, we've completed the inventory. Our climate adaptive species composition would be suitable in anniversary part, as it was approximately 90% by the end of the planning horizon. Although it was not met for Deer Park and Gateway Marsh under this scenario, uh, it was also not met under our maximized carbon scenario. Uh, an increased carbon sequestration. This uh, objective was met for Gateway Marsh and anniversary park, but again was not met for Deer Park. Um, it, although this was met under our second scenario of maximized carbon, again, the cost of $48,600 was deemed unnecessary in order to implement this when it would already increase over time as the forest grows. Uh, the objective of increasing the forest value by 5% was met. And within our report, we do recommend public outreach strategies. These are recommended to be implemented because it will create a dialogue with the public and uh, this can be greatly beneficial for the town of Oromocto as uh, public values uh, can be recommended. Uh, I'd like to now move on to Megan Goodall, who will be presenting the results from the Department of National Defense. Thank you, Axel. So moving on to DND, a total of 1,024 street trees were, were inventoried on site roughly which 25% were conifers and 75% were deciduous trees. A total of 36 species were identified on site, with the four most prevalent being red oak, white ash, Norway maple, and blue spruce, all together who accounted for 51% of the total inventory. The health of the DND street tree inventory was overall good, with 75% of total trees being in good condition. One of the most common issues seen with trees was mechanical damage, usually due to mowing damage or, in, or equipment left on trees. Mowing damage can be seen in the bottom left. This damage occurred on every one in five trees. Here we have the current valuation of the DND street tree inventory. All values are estimates based on recent averages. This valuation includes values for current carbon storage, carbon sequestration, avoided stormwater runoff, temperature offset, and structural value. This leads to annual benefits valuing around $38,000 and fixed benefits valuing around $658,000. Moving on to modeling, all inventory data was taken and compiled to create a model that forecasted future values. We used three scenarios with this model. First, a status quo scenario, which was used to em emulate maintaining current management strategies. Second, a maximizing carbon scenario. And third, maximizing ecosystem services. All scenarios were given the constraint to remove all dead and hazardous trees within the first period, as well as to replace every tree that had been removed. Here you can see the results from the model in relation to our objective goals. Boxes with check marks show if the objective was met, and shaded boxes show the most ideal value for each objective. As you can see, scenario three performed the best, meeting six out of the eight goals and showing the best value for six out of the eight goals. Scenario three was the only scenario to meet the objective to limit fair trees and to implement a maintenance schedule. Due to this, our recommended scenario is scenario three. Some important things to note, no scenarios were able to meet the species diversity goal to limit trees, sorry, to limit trees that were more than 10% of the total inventory. This is because the initial inventory had four species that fell into this category. As many of these trees were in good health, the model did not prioritize removing them to meet this goal. As well, no scenario met the goal to plant tree, three trees for every tree removed. This is as the team chose to instead use a replacement ratio based on the DBH of the removed tree. Here we have the estimated monetary value of the street tree inventory over time. This performs similarly over all scenarios, ending in year 50 between 14 and 16 million. Under the recommended scenario three, the final value in year 50 is estimated at 15.4 million. Planting and removals varied across all scenarios, with the most seen under scenario one. Maple was the most popular genus planted as it grows fast and has a high monetary value. Under scenario three, birch and pine were planted in order to shift species composition and increase species diversity. All maintenance actions in the model were assigned a cost. These costs were all derived from local contractors. 
Costs for removal and pruning varied depending on the size of the tree, with larger diameter trees costing more for each action. One important thing to note, pruning was the term used in our model. However, not all trees may improve from a pruning. This is instead meant to emulate implementing a maintenance schedule with different maintenance depending on the tree in question. This leads us to our estimated maintenance costs. On the right, you can see overall costs by type of maintenance, and on the left, you can see when these costs are incurred. In the first 10 years, this accounts for roughly 79% of all total maintenance costs across all scenarios. A large amount of this cost comes from, come from removals as well as pruning under scenario three. Our recommended scenario ends with a total maintenance cost of roughly $180,000 over the course of 50 years, which amounts to an average of $3,600 per year. In order to test the strength of our recommended strategy, two separate sensitivity analyses were completed one on a major wind event, and another on an outbreak of emerald ash borer. Our storm sensitivity analysis was based on damages incurred from the Tropical Storm Arthur in 2014. Based on data, data from street tree mortality in Fredericton, we estimated that 13% of all street trees would die due to the storm. This led to the death of 133 trees within the inventory. The cost of removing these trees, grinding the stumps, and replanting added to an additional $124,000 within 15 years after the storm. Our EAB sensitivity analysis was simulated such that the outbreak occurs in the first year of the model. As EAB has been cited within Oromocto as of 2021, it is safe to assume that the model would begin with an outbreak. Within the first five years, there is an 8% mortality rate for ash trees. After five years, that rate increases to 85% and after 15 years, the mortality rate reaches 95%. Over these 15 years, the loss of these ash trees results in a valuation loss of around $31,000. The increase in value after the initial outbreak that is seen in the graph is due to a limitation of our model and is the growth of the remaining 5% of ash trees. While in reality, this remaining 5% that are left after the first 15 years will likely only become more susceptible as they prolong their exposure and actually reduce in value. The outbreak results in roughly $123,000 in additional maintenance costs due to removals and replanting. In addition to the street tree inventory, an objective of D&D was to increase green space by naturalizing nine specific areas, which can be seen in the graph on the right. Using soil data gathered at these areas such as bulk density, gravimetric water content, and pH, alongside species-specific data such as climate resilience, spacing, and timing of planting, the team created planting recommendations specific to each site, seen in the chart on the left. Planting recommendations for tree, street trees were based on different values and can be seen in Appendix 9. Our operations plan provided is based on the actions from a recommended scenario to maximize ecosystem services. The operation plan for DND begins in the year 2022. The aim of the first five years is to complete recommended maintenance while optimizing future conditions for ecosystem service values. This involves removing all of the hazardous and dead trees and creating a regular pruning or maintenance schedule. Recommended maintenance for trees can be seen in the graph below. The next step is then to replace all trees with planting. Next, we recommend implementing a tree azen treatment for emerald ash borer due to the high quantity of ash within DND. Lastly, we recommend initiating a monitoring schedule. Street trees continuously change over time. As such, it is important to resample and conduct inventory to analyze these new changes. Based on the group sampling, we estimate it will take approximately 25 work hours with a group of four to reevaluate the DND inventory, which will cost approximately $4,000. We recommend reevaluating this inventory once every five years. Here you can see the outlined cost within the first five years of our operation plan. Costs include the removal of 31 trees and their subsequent sub stump grinding, including the stump grinding of eight pre-existing stumps. Costs also include the planting of 33 trees and the maintenance of 60 trees. This comes to a total of $98,000. As stated before, we recommend using tree azen to help maintain the ash population, with three treatments recommended over the five-year period on a total of 103 trees. This amounts to a total of $30,000. This brings the total budget, including trees, in to $128,000. As this exceeds the budget given, we recommend reducing maintenance within the first five years to allow for the tree azen treatment, as their operations plan without any maintenance costs 
comes to roughly $78,000. Next, I would like to invite Dominic up to continue with Oromocto First Nations. Thank you, Megan. I will now present the Oromocto's First Nations results as well as the conclusion. Starting off with a little um, inventory from the initial results, we have the main composition of the OFN forest being ash trees, balsam fir, and red maple, along with 15 other species present. Um, the diameter distribution of the whole forest is pretty wide, but it peaks at around 30 to 40 dBh, and the ash trees are around 10 to 20 dBh, and then the butternut species are a little bit larger than the ash at around 20 to 30 dBh. The benefits for the street trees, we have fixed benefits and annual benefits. Fixed benefits are broken up into the carbon storage, which is about $2,200, as well as the structural value, which is $22,000, totaling at about $24,200, and the annual benefits, which are the carbon sequestration, which is about $660 annually. Moving into the results of the modeling for the OFN forests, we have two scenarios. We have the status quo scenario, where business as usual right now, nothing is implemented. And then we have the maximized carbon scenario, where we have two treatments that are options, which is the pre-commercial thinning, as well as planting. Going into the results, we have the comparison between scenario one and two for the carbon storage as well as standing value. Noticeable differences are that in scenario one, the carbon storage and standing value increases by about 12%, whereas in scenario two, it's 19%. Uh, it should be noted that in scenario one, it does still achieve the objective, uh, still at less of a cost though. Looking at a different goal for the climate uh, adaptive species composition, it is quite similar between scenario one and two. Scenario two, including ash, has 2% of a increase but when you exclude ash, it's virtually the same. Uh, looking at the cost implement scenario two, which is all fill planting, to plant that 11.6 hectares, it would cost around $7,000. Looking at the open forest sensitivity analysis to uh, replicate an emerald ash borer outbreak, where in the first five years, 25% of the trees would face mortality. And by the end of 10 years, 99% of the trees would face mortality. Uh, what happens here is that the carbon storage as well as the standing value kind of levels out over a period of 10 years because as the ash trees decline and the rest of the forest inclines or increases, um, it doesn't really change at all. And looking at the climate adaptive species composition, when you remove ash, then it increases. But when you include ash, because they are forecasted to do well with the climate change for forecast, um, it does decrease, but you know, Emerald Ashborough kind of puts a stop to the whole forecast for the future. Uh, looking at the operations plan for the forest, we are recommending scenario one, which is to do nothing. And um, so that doesn't have any costs associated with it. Scenario two would have the cost, but we valued it as not having enough of a return for OFN for the minimal increase that it does provide. Um, what can be done is emerald ash borer treatments with triazin, and so we calculated it where if you were to treat the entire forest, it would cost about $770,000 annually, which is rather unreasonable. So we would recommend focusing on the priority trees, the ones outside of buildings, the ones in properties, the, uh, the large diameter seed trees. Those are the ones that should be saved for that will drastically reduce the cost annually. Uh, same calculations for the ash plots where there's higher density of ash trees at $123,000 annually, but our recommendations to do those priority trees still stands for this. Moving on to the street trees and the modeling results for that, the scenarios explored were the status quo, where do as you are doing today, which is um, no treatments, the climate change base management, which is do not plant non-native trees, and then there is the maximize carbon, which is to maximize carbon, to not plant non-native trees, to imp uh, implement a pruning schedule. Looking at the results for the objectives of this scenario, um, we would recommend scenario three, for it has the most best outcomes out of the three scenarios. 
going through it, we have the climate adaptive species. All three of these scenarios meet this easily. The target was 10%, all of them are over 30%. Um, no species accounting for over 10% of the inventory. Because there's only 23 trees in the inventory, it was hard to meet this target without increasing that inventory more. Um, trees associated with damaging agents, again, this can only be limited through removals and as there are no forecasted removals except for scenario one and two, um, then this cannot be met. Limiting tree fair trees, scenario three comes closest to this at 24%, but doesn't hit the 10 still. And retention and increase of 40 centimeter DBH trees. All scenarios meet this as with time, the trees will grow to an average of over 40 centimeters. And implement a pruning and planting maintenance schedule. Um, all scenario one and three implement this, scenario three far better. Also why we recommend this one. Um, average trees planted, scenario one and two have a tree removed, so thus a tree is being planted. Scenario three does not, so it does not meet that one. Looking at the total maintenance costs and the breakdown first, on the left you can see the um, breakdown between the scenarios. Scenario three has all pruning, and you can see the breakdown of that um, scenario three to the right, where ten trees are expected to be pruned. They're all fair, we want to increase those to good. That's going to cost around $8,400. Um, a professional should be contacted to get real numbers, real time numbers, because these are based on current estimates. And to see if these trees are going to benefit from being pruned, they may not. Some more may, uh, a professional should be contacted. Looking at the condition of the trees, um, with the initial inventory on the left and uh, scenario three on the right, we have scenario three increasing that good through that maintenance schedule with the pruning. Looking at the sensitivity analysis, two sensitivity analysis were conducted similar to the ones affecting the D&D street trees where the hurricane, oh sorry, post-tropical storm came through and um, it replicated 13% of the trees dying, which resulted in three trees dying, structural value loss of 7,600 and a cleanup of around 3,800. Um, Emerald ash borer one was also looked into for if it hits the forest, it's gonna hit the tr uh, street trees. One tree survived, there's only four trees in the OFN streets. And this resulted in $1,000 lost in structural value and $3,800 as well in um, cleanup. Uh, these, very, these values may change depending on the DBH of the tree that dies uh, professionals should be contacted for real numbers as well. And as a quick note, um, the model replaced the ash trees with maples and in the end comparing the two final values for structural value has resulted in an increase of $18,000. So the cost associated with treating the OFN street tree ash trees the annual cost would be about $120. They're smaller, there's less of them, it's gonna cost less, but it should be assessed to see their current health and see if they are viable to be treated for if they are 30% die back in the crown, then they should not be treated for it's too late to save them. Now on to the conclusion where I'm just gonna wrap up some key points for the each of the clients as well as points moving forward. So starting with the town of Oromukto, um, an inventory was completed for all three of the parks. Anniversary Park hit the climate adaptive species composition, the other two didn't. Uh, Anniversary Park and Gateway Marsh hit the um, carbon sequestration targets. Uh, Deer Park failed for that one. And the, in, oops, the increase in forest value was found in all three of the parks as well as public outreach was found um, conducted in the forms of public surveys as well as signage to be put up to get public uh, outreach. Points moving forward, a maintenance, pl a maintenance schedule and a inventory every five years should be conducted so that you can update what will happen on the forest level. For this inventory that we conducted will eventually expire and it is good to get that knowledge over and over. Department of National Defense, uh, with the implementation of Scenario 3, almost all the objectives are likely to be met. Um, moving forward, what should be priority? 
is the removal of hazardous and dead trees as well as stumps and the replacement with planted trees. Um, for maintenance costs, pruning should be done to get that increased structural value early as well as emerald ash borer treatments because emerald ash borer is found in Oromocto. It's only a matter of time before they start to get further infested and your ash trees begin to die out. Um, a summertime assessment needs to be done for those trees because we inventoried in the fall so cannot properly assess the crown dieback. So a uh, updated inventory on those ash trees needs to be done. A five-year re-inventory of the area, as Megan said, should only take about 25 hours for a four-person crew. And that should be done to uh, continuously update the condition and um, overall condition of the urban forest. For Oromocto's First Nations, the forest hits all of the objectives except for the ash retention for emerald ash borer is kind of right now an inevitability. Um, emerald ash borer treatment with triazin is fully recommended. Um, scenario one is going to be implemented as our recommendation, so no treatments. So not much to be done except for the treatments of the ash trees. For the street trees, Make, uh, focus on pruning and enhancing that forest, possibly with additional planting to get that forest more diverse is recommended uh, for both. An inventory every five years as well as a monitoring plan should be um, put into place. And I would like to thank everybody, the town of Oromocto, Oromocto's First Nations, Department of National Defense, uh, the University of New Brunswick for allowing this to occur, our professor, Jason Golding, Storm Robinson, everyone for coming out, and especially the team for making this happen. Uh, thank you.